Your darkest fears will run deep. Welcome to I Hope You Suffer. That's a solid That's one, I weird. think. It's pretty good. <laughs> we'll run deep. It's better than most of the ones we get. <laughs> Welcome to episode 72 of I Hope You Suffer. My name is Nathan. I'm Kit. I'm Katie. And this week we are joined by returning guest Michelle Ann Olson. Hi. To because gonna talk about a shark movie. We got to get the resident expert in here. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> we're like the plan was to have you on Santa Jaws as well, and then we were like, "Well, we're gonna do a gift exchange on that episode," and that felt weird. Oh, and then, that's <laughs> yeah, very sad for me. And then, and then all of our gifts ended up running like late in the mail, so we ended up having to record <laughs> it separately anyway. <laughs> we're we're an efficient operation here. And I hope you suffer. <laughs> I sure uh, are. The package I mailed to Kit came back to my house in the middle of my front yard, <laughs> like. Four days later, and I was like, well, that's good. Good place to leave it is in the middle of my yard. Um, Alright, anyway. We are talking about 2018's Nightmare Shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had seen this previous, so I guess we'll start Kit. What was your initial reaction I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I watched this yesterday, and I don't remember a goddamn thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, watching it is very weird for the moments where it just like outright apes a nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> which I I expected so obviously, <laughs> but well, it's like the shot for shot like bathtub scene, just like <laughs> oh, they're just like doing a nightmare on elm street i thought it was gonna be a knockoff not like partial remake but with a shark substitute <laughs> it's a nightmare on shark street hmm. i kind of wish they had called it that i'm shocked they didn't <laughs> because every one of these shark movies that sci-fi puts out has like five titles i'm surprised that wasn't one of them yeah that's true uh what do you think katie um it was okay I thought it's it's like it's okay. I, it's not like the worst weird shark movie that I've seen, but um, it wasn't the best. I thought it had some cool stuff, but it was like really hard to take notes for because like every time something happened, it's like it, it was like fifty fifty chance that it was a dream or not, and like sometimes it was like inceptioning and all, and so I was just like, Meh, yeah, like I get it. You're having a nightmare, but. <laughs> You know, and then yeah, I thought they just like they ripped too much of it, but then the stuff in it that was original, I was like, hmm, maybe not. So yeah, the, that was somehow <laughs> the most boring part. Yeah, for real, I agree. So that's what I thought. All right, what about you, Michelle? So, if this had legitimately been Nightmare on Elm Street, but Kruger is a shark. I think I would have. I think I would have been really on board with that because I think most movies can be made better with a shark. Um, but <laughs> agree. I, I just generally, um, I might be biased, but and if it had been that, I think that would have been hilarious, and I would have been on board. But instead, they took it in all these different directions uh, with like. They were in a they were isolated in this cabin in the woods and there were bees for some reason and there were it was not even about a shark i needed about 70 percent more shark so i was disappointed that that monster i don't think it featured as much as it should have um that said there were some moments that were trippy and i think creepy especially as part of the dream sequences where i actually wondered if i was bugging out but <laughs> <laughs> I think just overall, I wanted more shark and less of all this other <clears throat> shit. 
There was uh, just... Yeah, sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I was going to say, I I pretty much agree. I think for the shark movies we've done on this podcast, this is probably my least favorite, but I do enjoy it. Like, there's also an aspect to it where I've... This, so this movie, Kaplan and Gina are from... Mm-hmm. Or Kaplan, Gina, Jolene, and Rob are from previous sci-fi shark movies. So they've oh. now established a universe. <laughs> like Trailer Park Shark, right? Yes. So Jolene and yeah. Rob are from Trailer Park Shark, and Kaplan and Gina are for, uh, from Atomic Shark. Oh, shit. Amazing. So I'm kind of into that. Yeah, which is... So I think I kind of enjoyed it on that level, having seen both of those. Um, uh, how... How do you go from Atomic Shark to, <laughs> like, Nightmare Shark? A nightmare, yeah. That, <laughs> it seems like they've got the order reversed. <laughs> I do like the tagline for Atomic Shark is, the coast is toast. Well, I also like that Atomic Shark's <laughs> other name is just Saltwater. So, like... <laughs> what? I don't know how you, like, put those two, like, together to get, you know, like... It's, it's just, it's strange. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, there's also the actor, or the kid that plays the, um, the boy in the dream where, like, uh, what's his name? Uh, Rob, I think, goes running into, like, the water on the raft. The kid that's, like, in the raft. Mm. It's my raft. It's my yeah. raft. It's my he's, raft. He's in, like, four of these shark movies as just different characters, so I just assume he's, like, the Stan Lee of this universe. <laughs> this child. His I name is... he's been typecast. Yes. Jake Chiason? Yeah. Chiason? I kind of right. hate him. Yes, same. God. Yeah, right, like, why can't I be yeah. the Stan Lee of sharks? Can I have, can I have what a that career. There, there's a lot of people that, like, because, like, I bought that, like, six shark movie set, and, like, I've just kind of just been watching shark movies for the last little bit. And a lot of these actors seem to repeat as different characters in a lot of these movies, like, where they almost have, like, the same cast just jumping over to another movie playing different characters. Oh, uh, yeah, so they're, like, that's what I was going to ask. They're, like, legit different characters, like, different names and stuff. Yeah, and like, yeah, okay. and so, like there's, there's an actor in like Trailer Park Sharks, who is also in like Swamp Shark, who I believe is also in like one of like like Ozark River Shark, or like what you know, he plays like a different character, but essentially the same type of character in like all of them. It's it's just well, good. It's it's an anthology. I mean, basically, I assume that all of the sci-fi shark movies are now connected somehow. That's it's basically ambitious. like uh, American Horror Story. Yeah, exactly. By <laughs> demand, but better. Avengers. Yes. Oh, but better, definitely better. <laughs> I need like a witch. Okay, TM. I hope you suffer. Witch shark. Can we make that happen? Oh my god. Shark yes. covenant. All right. Get at me, somebody. You know, Misty. Like, are you listening? Two days from now, we're gonna see like a news story that's just like <laughs> shark coven. Coming to sci-fi. I'll burn them down. Well, I mean, they already have Ouija Shark coming, so... Oh, I yeah. I don't, I don't know if that was sci-fi, but... I'll um, watch it. Alright, so this movie was directed by Griff First, who we have experience with on this podcast from 100 that, million BC. That's a made-up <gasps> name. It, well, he directs under about six different names, so I don't know which one is his real name. Because he directed under a different name for 100 million BC. That but skeevy snake. He also did Ghost Shark. Oh, damn. oh that's right. Yeah. That's He's right. all over the place. Yeah, he did Trailer Park Shark, Alligator Alley, Arachnoquake, <laughs> Swamp Shark. <laughs> like, he does. He's an otar. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I, st- I stan him. That's fine. Yeah, 100 million Lake BC Placid was three. bad. But He's got my vote. Yes. Everybody's got to oh, have wow. that that one, one bad one in there. 
Um, this was also written by Griff first, and I think it was like co-directed with his brother Nathan first. Um, I like it how, how it says, yeah, as the brothers the first. Brothers first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it stars Tony Amendola as Novak, who played Rushdie on Seinfeld. Yes. So we also, best connection. Geppetto in Once Upon a Time. So I was really upset to see him in this role. He's it was really disconcerting. <coughs> he's got it. <laughs> he does all kinds of shit. Like his IMDb filmography is pretty vast. Wow. Yeah. He's the that guy of that guys. Well, yeah, I've I've started to notice a lot of these movies have one kind of Legit. sort of well-known actor, like what like one of those like character actors that you see and stuff but you'd never know their name. Yeah, or and you can't like pinpoint what else you saw them in, but you're like, I know this guy. Yeah. Um, this also stars Bobby Campo as Kaplan, Rachel Brooks Smith as Gina, um, and I don't know, just a bunch of people from the other shark movies. Um, there's somebody. I think the person who plays Ava's mom also was in Trailer Park Sharks, but is like a completely different character so it's all extremely confusing <laughs> um all right so michelle this is mm-hmm. this movie is factually based i assume uh, yes. <laughs> it's, no it's true that most sharks um, do have the ability to infiltrate our dreams and that is where they are most dangerous <laughs> Oh man, that's, that's true. the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yep, never sleeping. <laughs> Someone that's already scared of the ocean, like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot. Oh, oh that's yeah. fine. I just don't fall asleep. Don't need to go near. I get, as long as I'm away from the ocean, I feel like I'm probably fine. Between this and Ghost Shark, I stand no chance. No, but cl- clearly, yeah, not, right. Because sh- in this universe, sharks can get you in any number of ways, far from the ocean. <laughs> I'm going to wake up. My house is just going to be submerged in water. <laughs> shark jumps out of Paul's water bowl. Yeah, this full, <laughs> full on ghost shark. Um, so, this movie opens with a sort of Nightmare on Elm Street homage that comes back a bunch of, like, the hand and face pressing through what looks like. Mm. It's supposed to be a wall, but ends up being a bed sheet that Ava pops through and is in a nightmare. She, um, is it like, on a street that everything kind of just looks weird. She sees a bunch of people on a boat waving at her, but they're kind of... I- I- equally in like fast motion and slow motion yeah so they just kind of look like they're moving weird and as she gets closer like blood starts pouring from their heads mm. and then they just disappear um and then uh, as she's standing there she almost gets hit by another boat that comes driving at her motor first which is terrifying <laughs> absolutely <laughs> we've seen uh, from Santa Jaws, what happens in that situation? I I guess I wish to say too. Talking about this will be extremely weird because everything jumps back and forth between characters and their dreams, and in the real world, and all kinds of shit. So uh, be prepared to be extra confused as we are. I was throughout my viewing experience. Extra <laughs> I luckily this was the second time I watched it today, so like I sort of knew. Does it get better? I mean, it's it, yeah. it, it gets more um, concise, I guess. Like it's easier to know what is happening, but like I think it, it's still kind of weird. Like the sound quality in this movie, both times I watched it, were terrible. <laughs> like the DVD especially is like all of the dialogue is incredibly low and then all of the sound effects are incredibly loud. So it's like people That's the will, real nightmare. Oh god, people will be talking and you'll like <laughs> you'll turn it up sound and then all of a thing. sudden like a shark will jump out or whatever and do a jump scare where the sound effect is real loud and then you're just like, ah oh, damn it, blow out my speakers. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, Ava's in this nightmare. And she's like running down the street, and a shark fin starts popping out of the cement and following her, which <laughs> rules. <Amazing. laughs> and she just like comes across a puddle that she falls into and gets dragged down by like some seaweed. And it cuts to her in bed in like the real world, and her body her body starts like floating in the air. Yeah. Which is very <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't really get that part. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> it happens. This I is guess. what I mean: is the movie like doesn't know what it wants to be because whenever they're in their dreams, they're having these experiences with the nightmare shark. In the real world, they're showing all the symptoms of like a possession with this levitation and like the vomiting up seawater. It yeah. It it's I like it's it's thematically it's all over the place. So I think even in this first scene, I was like, what? <laughs> what is what is happening? Like I I almost feel like if they would have went straight up Nightmare on Elm Street references where like yeah. This should have been a separate character. Like a character that's just set up for like the beginning that gets like eaten in the bed like Johnny Depp does in Nightmare on mm-hmm. Elm Street. Or even like you like they completely missed like the night was it Nightmare on Elm Street 2 that has the waterbed. Oh, that's For, a missed opportunity. Like, there, yeah, there are so many opportunities that if you were going to make this, like, a straight-up Nightmare on Elm Street kind of homage or rip-off or whatever, like, they, they just, there's so many things. Like, anytime they floated, I expected them to, like, do, like, in Nightmare on Elm Street 1 where the ladies, like, gets, like, dragged, like, up the wall and, like, under the ceiling and gets killed or whatever, like... There's, I don't know, there's a bunch of missed opportunities Some, with that stuff. Something just occurred to me. When they're floating, are they meant to be, like, like underwater? Because I did notice her hair fly out behind her like she had just dropped into the water. Maybe that's I, what they were trying to do. That makes a lot more sense. Well, it that would, does, yeah. except, like, <laughs> towards the end when Gina and Ava are in the desert yeah. and they start floating, like... True. I don't. Yeah. I, I wonder. I just feel like they did it for like a an effect to show like them like something that's just not them twitching in a bed in the real world. I mean, <laughs> what is the desert but land water, Nathan? Mm, true. This wow. podcast is over. I hope you suffer the lot. Yeah, they were pretty much just sort of like, well, we have money for like this extra effect. Because, like, there's not really, aside from, like, the same effect that they show of the shark and, like, lightning, like, there's not really, like, a ton of stuff that happens with the people. So, like, this is, like, the only thing that really happens with them is that they float for yeah, whatever reason. So their entire budget was spent on levitation? And lightning. Yeah. Oh, and, and lightning. Bees. And the swarm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, to your point, though, like, why is he sometimes a like a shark what he's like a nightmare ghost shark but then sometimes he's like a swarm of insects why well, I, also bees. Do, yeah. do they like i think it said in the closed captioning that it was like insects but like the first time yeah. i watched it i just assumed it was supposed to be kind of like i kept referring to it as dust in my notes but like mm. i i assumed it was supposed to just be like an effect of the shark kind of like melding into the real world yeah, I guess, but, but yeah, I know it definitely. I know in the closed captioning, it definitely says like insect sounds. Insects, or some yeah. Shit. Well, they said and it was making like buzzing. a. Bzz- yeah, yeah, exactly. So I was just I was mad because in their dreams he's a cool looking shark with wicked teeth, and then in the real world he's bees. I just didn't understand. <laughs> he also like. <laughs> he he like he, he's a shark. But, like, whenever the shark appears, the subtitle says, like, shark howling. But the sound that he makes is literally, like, I know. So, like, every time he shows up, he's, like, Ooh! Which, like, don't get me wrong. Listen, that was actually no. pretty freaky. But I'm, like, Listen, what is I happening here? I don't know if you've ever dived with sharks, but that's what they sound like. That is terrifying. That's even <laughs> no, worse. No. Just, <laughs> just death moans. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, the grudge following you everywhere i that's 
am now amazed that sharks... I don't know why I never thought of it. I guess it makes sense. But, like, I've never thought about, like, what kind of sound they make underwater. Oh, they don't sound like that. I was being... I was joking. Yeah. I don't want to, like, create... Do they make noise? Well, I'm because cutting, I recently... I'm, I'm cutting that out. I'm just leaving the part in the sentence. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be like, is this, is she for real? And then they're going to see you like scuba diving with real sharks. And they're going to be like, well, I guess she said. I guess that's what they sound like. God, that's yeah. scary. <laughs> Ugh. I no, was I've like, never did heard this, a shark make a sound. I was like, did this movie may have like a real thing in it? No. That would be they, horrifying. <laughs> they obviously roar like lions, like in Jaws the Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, great movie. I do imagine them making some kind of like rah, like I know they don't, but <laughs> rah. I hope it's know? exactly like that, like someone <laughs> like, poorly trying to scare someone. Rah. I just kind of hope they just yeah they just swim by like ghosts. They're just like. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope they're happy. Like so, I've, yes. I've never. I've never heard them make any of these sounds, but next time I'm under there, I'm going to be imagining that they're making these sounds. <laughs> and, uh, Maybe don't do that. No, I, That sounds like, scary. Oh, like a happy one. Like, yeah, like going by just making spooky ghost sounds. I think <laughs> that's delightful. <laughs> I like that. I don't like the noises that the shark made in this movie. I actually no, thought it was, it was really freaky. Quite so, creepy. Yeah. I just want them all to roar like a lion now. That's all I want. <laughs> like the all beginning of the wanted. like MGM reel or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, Ava's floating and slams into a bookshelf and wakes up, and then it just cuts to like the opening credits, and then Ava and I guess her boyfriend Enzo. Mm. Oh, um, Enzo. Great Jesus. names in this movie. <laughs> um, I had to write them down because they're all like. Heart. there's just so many people uh, I mean there, that's the thing is there's not but there's like a lot of quote unquote main characters because mm -hmm. there's really only like 10 people yeah. in this whole movie but like most of them are pretty important um, so Ava and Anzo are at the airport talking about getting set for this like tr drug trial with Dr. Novak who they somehow got hooked up with from sending an email, which seems not <laughs> legit. Don't go to the doctor if he sent you an email. Yeah. There are a lot of, no, there are a lot of things about this clinical trial that are not legit. <laughs> I just, not, I don't think it's FDA approved. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they're also being paid, which is why most of them go. Um, you then introduced to Gina and Kaplan, who. Kaplan. Kaplan's <laughs> a, just like a weird first name. Um, it's like Kaplan and Enzo, and then Rob. <laughs> like yes, but Rob is also with a Jolene, so like yeah, Jolene, Jolene. <laughs> That's it. Was going through my head the entire time. <laughs> yeah, because they're like Southern too, so. Yeah, it was perfect. It was very Dolly Parton. Yeah, they're the ones from Trailer, Trailer Park Shark. Shark, yeah. Oh, yeah. I um, wish the shark had sang Jolene every time it appeared. Biggest <laughs> missed opportunity <laughs> is not having Dennis Haskins come back from Trailer Park Shark to be in this movie, but put Mr. Belding in all of your movies, people. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Gina and Kaplan just have like a back and forth about how they like weren't a lot to tell people where they were going and the pay and all that kind of stuff. And then you're introduced to Rob and Jolene who are driving and Rob falls asleep. And like, this is one of the time, like I think the first time you are like put straight, like, like you're into a dream, but you not, you don't necessarily know, but you kind of know, like it's kind of amb ambiguous. But, like, he kind of nods off and wakes up as he almost slams into somebody with his car. Mm -hmm. And there's this girl covered in blood who runs over to, like, a lake. Like, the shore of a lake where there's a boy covered in blood in a raft. And, Katie, do you want to do your impression? <laughs> it's my raft! It's my raft! It's my raft! <laughs> that was good. Wow. Uh, I just, like, 
this is like one of the only parts my 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 main criticism with this movie is that like i think it takes itself too seriously so we don't get the funny parts that like a lot of these other movies have but this part Mm -hmm. made me laugh because like this boy is like covered in blood he has like no irises it's just like white and he's chanting this which like is creepy like if this happened to me i'd be like oh and uh and then so he's yelling it's my raft and he's like dude get out of my raft (laughs) and i just laughed really hard i was like all right i mean that's when i'm like okay obviously well you know it's a dream but like i don't know i just thought that was funny it's too bad because other elements of these dream sequences were kind of disconcerting and like genuinely creepy like with the the twitchiness and like the eyes are open and then yeah. suddenly closed or the mouths are are frowning and then suddenly smiling and like there were other elements that were genuinely creepy and then they kind of do, like <coughs> fall into the utterly ridiculous um but yeah. i thought some some parts of this dream sequence in particular were off-putting yeah it's it's weird like i feel like this they they have this one be less like dark i guess just to kind of because it just happens and you're not like at first you're not really realizing what's happening as opposed to like a lot of the rest of them it's pretty much immediately you can tell you're in like a nightmare or whatever yeah. um but i don't know they this fucking boy jumps out of rob's raft he like <laughs> flops into the water and then him and like the girls the swim, dive. swim out into the middle of it and Rob gets in the raft and starts paddling out after them as the shark from this movie shows up and then goes to attack him as he wakes up and almost drives off the road which Jolene Safe. is not happy about <laughs> fair um, and it pretty much just cuts to all of them arriving at the cabin at the same time, which worked out pretty well. Some good planning from everybody's part. Um, and you just get a scene of Dr. Novak telling the group about his research and this drug he made that he's going to test on them. And you get a quick kind of montage of everybody taking this drug and getting MRIs done and bunch of nonsense that goes by pretty quick just kind of showing you that they've all taken the drug basically because this spoiler this drug is important sort of um hypnosil as it were is that the name (laughs) does it have a name i don't know if they ever do name it yeah i don't think they do i like hypnosil uh, except it doesn't hypnotize people. That's Enzo's job. Yeah, ugh, like what? Yeah, the worst hypnotist. Just uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shakily dangling the- a necklace. He's just like, by the way, would you like me to hypnotize you? <laughs> <laughs> um, so after they've all taken pills, got MRIs of their brains, um. There's like a group session kind of thing where they're all discussing their nightmares and Ava tells the story of like as as a kid being on this boat that some other dude is like out <laughs> floating around that they were like, oh, this guy probably needs help. So he, this guy shoots their boat, which then sinks and her parents are eaten by a shark. <laughs> Just the most, like, convoluted fucking plot in this movie. Yeah. Uh, like, I can't remember, like, you see this guy's boat in her nightmare at the beginning, and it comes back again, and it's... What is it called? Chum Bucket? I can't I meant to write it down, and I forgot. No, uh, it's, uh, Cow Hoo Hoo? Well, that's the... That's, that's the <laughs> no, that's the name. I of thought the that shark. was the name of the boat. That's it the, had, no, that's the name that's, of the shark. That's written on the boat, but the boat had a name that was like something oh. dweller it's like or chum something. bucket, bottom dweller, bottom, bottom dweller, dweller. That's, yeah, bottom dweller. Like that. That's it. I I refuse to write the name of the shark down because um also refuse to say it out loud. We, <laughs> so. we should only let Katie say it. Yes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so they all 
all kind of come to the, like the realization that they're all having these dreams of the same shark after one of them like describes what it looks like. Uh, Novak tells them that he has the same dreams and these that these dreams go back like centuries and are caused by like near death experiences. Can... Yeah. Okay. So when I first heard this, I was like. I like eye rolled. I was like, yo, okay, because he's like, yeah, it's it's these dreams go back centuries and blah blah blah. Okay, but this is like a real story. So like they oh, took this, really this part to her. <laughs> no. <laughs> like the legend of this like Hawaiian shark god thing Say is it. like real. Say it. Say it. <laughs> what's what's its name? Cow hoo hoo. <laughs> he he is like a real like legend. Uh, so then I wasn't as mad because like I thought they made that up and I was like this is stupid. But but I I have a question they didn't. for you. Have they yeah. uh, have they represented him fairly? Oh I don't know. I that I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so because um uh I don't know. I'll read about it. I'll get I'll, back to you. I'm- I'm just realizing that I'm now mad that this shark was not just carrying a hammer and, like, controlling lightning. It could have just been, like, the Thor of this universe. And then we could have had a real Shark Avengers movie. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. I don't, that, yeah. I, that, the, when the, the, he's, like, explaining... Like the stuff about these dreams and the shark, I was just like, "Oh my god!" Just somebody get eaten, because not enough people in this movie get eaten. Yeah, for real. Agreed. Um. Um. um no. Yeah, I can't tell you guys about this shark lore because there are a lot of like Hawaiian words, and I it makes no sense to me. So, just, anyways, you could Google it for yourself. <laughs> yeah, Google it based on how Katie's pronouncing it. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um so there's a there's talk from ava and enzo about how ava can like like or dr novak says something about like lucid dreams and how you know like in a lucid dream you could control like what's happening ava says that like yes that her and enzo have been trying that with him hypnotizing her um just a bunch of gobbledygook dialogue that kind of is important to the plot but barely it just comes back later i mean sort of not even because like ava's the only one that's like oh yeah i've lucid dreamed a little bit but like she's like not anyway whatever. it just sets up the idea of being able to go into your dream to like do whatever like from nightmare on elm street basically right but like whatever rob rob is the only smart person in this group who is just like this is bullshit i'm out of here uh (laughs) good work rob yes good job rob um i also realized watching it the second time that like you do you ever see what happened with kaplan or, like, no. do you ever see Rob's body again? Like, No, yeah. you don't. Do you, you don't. I, Rob? Yeah, no. you do. You were. You do? Yeah. Where is it? What happened to him? Uh, so, like, remember at the very end, uh, when Ava's just, like, running around, she just, like, opens this door, and there's just, like, bodies in it. Oh, in, like, that, a closet. Oh, was yeah. that both of them, or was that just Rob? It was of both. It was Kaplan, Rob, the girl, and then like two random people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I remember that I was like, happening, Who? but I was like taking notes, and I just like w- looked up as she like it cut from whatever that shot was to like Ava's face, and I didn't see who was in there. And didn't. Really I had to like go back. <laughs> yeah, I had to go back because there's like two other people, and I'm like, who? Who was that? Who are these randos? Like. Maybe they're supposed to be like lab technicians or something. I don't well, know. Well, it's, I... it's he he Enzo or not Enzo. Doctor Novak has been doing these like experiments previously, which he talks about. So I think that's who. It's just other, just like a random couple. Yeah, yeah. From a a third untitled shark project. Yeah, that will be airing that's on right. sci-fi. You'll find out in the prequel. Ouija shark. shark. Oh my god! If it's <laughs> the Ouija shark people, I'll lose my mind. 
Uh, have you watched that trailer? No. Oh, it's. Crazy. I didn't know there was a trailer. Yes, it's. Oh my gosh! Okay. It. I don't. I. I don't think it's sci-fi because it somehow looks worse than sci-fi movies, but it, it looks extra what? stupid, and I can't wait to see it. Um. So. Yeah, Rob is just, like, not having any of this, and it's just like, I'm leaving, and Jolene tries to convince him to stay, but he's like, fuck this, I'm out of here, and is like, I'm gonna go stay at a motel, like, down the street, and leaves. As he's driving, he starts to nod off and falls asleep, which turns into, like, a dream immediately. So pretty much for the rest of this movie, like, you are... Pretty e- you can pretty easily tell what is a dream and what isn't. It's just a lot of cutting back and forth between dreams and real world stuff. But he ends up driving off the road after seeing a, the weird, what I referred to as a dust shark. But apparently it's <laughs> some sort of insects. TM, TM, We've dust shark. We've all been there. Yes, dust shark coming soon. <laughs> um, he gets out of his car and gets a gun that he just conveniently has in his uh, glove compartment. Oh, are you surprised? I mean, I'm always surprised, but not not really. (laughs) Rob's definitely carrying. I feel like that's probably Jolene's gun. (laughs) Jolene Uh, strapped. Yes. (laughs) Um, And then the dust shark knocks over his car and I guess it I like. I assumed he got eaten, but apparently not. Did you see his body later? Yeah, I that the, I don't know. That's that part was kind of weird. That just so like. Is Gina's the only person that gets eaten in this movie? Yes. Or sort of. She gets like mauled or whatever. That's. Yeah. That's disappointing. Um. Again, like another, you just miss so many opportunities to just like do Nightmare on Elm Street people or just shit with people getting killed in this movie that they just did not take. I wish the shark had called someone on the phone. <laughs> just had the tongue. Tried to look. <laughs> tried to lick them. Yeah. <laughs> That's <Ew>. adorable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Two just making opinions. roaring sounds. <laughs> <laughs> what? What was that, Michelle? I said, well, I said, that's adorable, and Katie said, ew, and I just said, that's just a difference of opinion. It's... Well, the licking through the phone. If a shark called me on a phone, I would think that was cute, but I don't want him to lick me. Okay, fine. What if it called you, but then it was just, like, making the noise from the movie? Oh. Uh, I don't like that either. Hard, hard stance against that. Now, I want a sequel where the shark calls... Michael from Tammy and the T-Rex and they just like so the sequel had better be a scream ripoff where it's the shark calling people and being like what's your favorite shark movie (laughs) oh my god I love it sci-fi should be listening to us and paying us money we could be just like there's so many movies they could be making right now yeah Uh, I'm really missing the boat to get paid for shark movie ideas oh my god (laughs) These are exactly the conversations that are happening at Sci-Fi, like in their conference room right now. Like there, there are people coming up with, like somebody's job is to come up with these ideas, and I'm really, I'm really envious because you know that these are conversations that are happening right now. It would yeah, be, it should, should be our jobs. Go, it should we should be. all go barge in, and we'll just shout as many shark movie ideas as possible before they kick us out. <laughs> well, they'll have to hire us. <laughs> It's especially because, like, all of these movies have kind of basically the same layout, where it's like, something crazy happens with a shark, one person realizes it's happening, and most of the other people kind of, like, have to be convinced what's happening or whatever, and then people start getting eaten until, like, it's down to, like, the last person, like... And where I've just been watching a bunch of these movies for the last couple weeks. Like, they all pretty much follow the same sort of format and then just put into, like, different scenarios. Like, like being in a nightmare or being in a swamp or whatever. Being in a trailer park. <laughs> have they just done space Being in space. Yet? I guarantee yeah, there they, has to be. That? There has to be. 
I don't know if sci-fi has, but there has to be some sort of shark movie in space. Are the sharks wearing like little? Oh well, I guess didn't helmets sh- filled with water. Didn't one of the Sharknado movies go to space? Yeah, I think I, the third yeah, one. Yeah, three. <laughs> I have three out of how they went to space real early then. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what? Well, back at the cabin, the group splits off to like where they're going to be sleeping and since Rob left Ava says she's going to go stay with Jolene uh, and you get like some stuff of like Jolene and Ava bonding and Jolene bitching about Rob leaving okay there is also a movie in pre-production called Space Sharks by the way yes. of, of course there is <laughs> so whenever that comes out we'll I, come back to it if it's not, looks like it's what? everyone's name is like different so i don't know that it's like a i think it might be like a, a in a different language i'll still watch it well the poster is really funny because it's like earth in space and then there's like sharks swimming up to it but there's like a different like a couple different kinds of sh- actually it looks like it's just like a jaws and a hammerhead but what um, is so look forward to that <laughs> and I, it does look like Sharknado 3. They, they were also in space. Yeah. I knew one yeah. of them went to space, but I'm just, I'm shocked that it was so early in that fucking franchise. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Jolene and Ava are, like, kind of bonding, and you get, you cut back between them and then Kaplan and Gina's sleeping in, or, like, wherever they're, like, they're, like, sleeping quarters. Um, where Kaplan and Gina are having sex, and Novak is watching it on cameras, because he's a creep. Yeah, I was like, come on, man. (laughs) Not only is he watching them, he's, like, drinking wine and, like, listening to classical music. I was like, wow, classy. He's a classy guy. Yes. Um, uh, so... Uh, Gina is going to take a bath afterwards and, like, (laughs) tells Kaplan not to let her, like, fall asleep, which then he immediately does. And I think he realizes he's fallen asleep when he, like, sees... Or, well, this, this whole part was confusing because I know, like, I think Jolene is also... No, I guess not. Never mind. I'm, I think I'm confusing this with a different part. Um, he sees the shark pressing like through the wall, kind of like from Nightmare on Elm Street, which this also happens like a handful of times in this movie, where they were just like, yeah. I don't know what part we're going to rip off, the bathtub and the shark pressing through a wall, and that's it. <laughs> um, what if they had done the alley scene? Where oh, Freddy's arms are really long, fuck, so the shark's fins are real long. Made me so <laughs> sad. That's not a real thing. <laughs> they sort of did do that, like in the desert. I don't know if those were supposed to be teeth or like what was going on, but oh, yeah, uh, the, you know when those things come out of the sand. The whole desert scene is just <laughs> confusing, and I don't know why it's there, but yeah, I don't either. It's kind of like the opposite of like you know being in water. <laughs> I think I blacked out because this is coming back to me in like fits and starts. <laughs> I think like uh, uh, I've totally forgotten that entire sequence in the desert. It's like it has. I don't. It doesn't make any sense. Like I don't know no. why she wasn't on the boat with her parents. If that's what like her nightmare is. Like I don't know why she's in the desert, but I don't know. I feel like they probably just stumbled across like a a studio lot that had like a big desert scene they were like can we use this for like 20 minutes and just film some shit <laughs> on, like, the sand and, um, I looked it up they filmed in Louisiana I didn't know that Louisiana had great expanses of desert <laughs> wow but like I'm not American so I could be wrong <laughs> we do have deserts I, in every state here every wow <laughs> that's cool uh, so, um, <laughs> as Kaplan is kind of, I guess, realizing he's in a dream or something's going on, somebody's, somebody's asleep, um, 
Somebody somewhere. Yeah. Who knows at this point? You cut to Ava telling Jolene about like the being tested on as a kid because of her mm-hmm. nightmares and um it cuts back to Gina in the bath asking Kaplan to make sure she's like doesn't fall asleep again and like this whole this whole thing cuts back and forth between like the two duos a bunch but essentially it's like Kaplan like falls asleep at like while Gina's in the bath and then it's just a bunch of shit of Ava and Jolene talking um Ava's like singing in bed and Jolene falls asleep and then I th- I what I think I think it's Jolene being asleep that is like affecting everybody else that's so what she's, like, I letting the shark loose. Well, yeah, because I, I I think based on like the the drug that Novak gives them all, like that intensifies everything. I think they're all being affected by like one of them being asleep. That makes a little bit more sense, but I don't think they did a very good job of conveying that. If that's like mm-hmm. legit. But does Gina not also fall asleep in the tub? Like she's kind of like nodding off, and I thought that's why. He was attracted to her. Well, and then I thought that Kaplan dreamed that Gina fell asleep. See, that, I, yeah, it's all extremely Why? confusing and not explained very well. <laughs> because, like, he's asleep, and she, quote-unquote, falls asleep, and then the shark thing happens, and then he wakes up, and he's like, oh, my God, and then he goes in there, and there's, like, a fake-out or whatever. So, like, who knows? Like, yeah, I, I don't, don't know. I don't think Gina ever actually, like, falls asleep. I think... I think it's Kaplan and Jolene sleeping that is affecting everybody. Because, like, I think they show, like, a scene where it looks like she's going to nod out. But, like, then the next thing you see is, like, Kaplan going in there to, like, make sure she's awake. And that's when you, like, it, it looks like she's, like, dead in the water or whatever. And then she, like, pops out and it's fine. I don't know. It's all... All of the nightmare just, stuff in this movie is not explained super great. Like, spoiler, sci-fi did not but I deal really, with the well, plot. <laughs> I really did like that scene in the bathtub where instead of the hand, it's just the dorsal fin. Yes, it's, uh, that's, <laughs> that was, like, I... When I, My favorite. I stumbled across this, like, the trailer for this movie, and that was, like, the thing I saw that I was like, we are doing this movie. <laughs> <laughs> It's a perfect shot. Like it's, it's such like an iconic image from Nightmare on Elm Street that just seeing the shark fin though is just like a perfect like facsimile for it. I really, yeah, that's what I mean. I wish they had like leaned more heavily into that because. Yeah, I agree. It was pretty great. Um, well, and I guess oh, okay. So I guess the reason it's confusing is because like some people are going to sleep. You find out that like the shark is trying to come through to the real world like through their dreams so i guess that's why like jolene falls asleep and the shark is coming through and that's why ava can see the shark even though she's not asleep so yeah, i, I think that sense. i think that's to, to your point like if one person falls asleep he's trying to come through and because of the drug it's like worse and everyone else can see it but like what does the do you know what the drug does does the drug make them fall asleep or does the drug make doctor the shark come through doctor novak says something about it later in the movie about how it just kind of intensifies their like dreaming which is like the whole thing with the shark is like their fear and like whatever this drug is supposed to be f- helping force the shark into the real world basically so i think it just intensifies what's happening more than anything i really felt bad for every single character in this movie because they all have brutal insomnia and just need like a a good night's sleep (laughs) like i just i felt really bad for all of them this is essentially the state i live in (laughs) right i know it was really relatable (laughs) Uh, so, yep. so, like, yeah, you get the scene of the shark fin in the bathtub right before Gina's, like, sort of attacked. Like, she gets pulled underwater, but I don't think she actually gets hurt. Jolene, though, at some point during whatever's happening, like, gets, 
like a, I guess what's supposed to be some sort of bite on her leg. Um, I thought that was Gina. Well, I thought it was. Yeah, in the bath. Oh, was it? For some reason, I thought it was Jolene. Which I was like. Gina gets, she gets like pulled under the water, right? Yeah. I think the shark has her and she's being pulled under. I must have just been like, I, for some reason, I thought it was like Jolene that it happened to where I was just like, that's confusing, but. <laughs> Y'all are doing better than me. I don't know anyone's name. <laughs> Jolene has he said Kaplan, and I was like, who the hell was that? <laughs> he's got... He's the guy that has the terrible tattoos. He's the guy that has sex with Gina. <laughs> that's like <laughs> Thanks, the, only, the only part Kit's that's like, like, you need to remember for him, basically. In Kit's mind, he's like, who's Gina? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yep. <laughs> She's the girl that has sex with Kaplan. Come on, dude. Yeah. Keep up. For all I know, the shark's name is Gina. <laughs> oh my god now i'm just no. like imagining gina from brooklyn 99 like as a shark <laughs> you know the shark's name because katie said it a couple times yeah what was the name again katie remind me Quahuhu. <laughs> oh god Quahulu. you think is this supposed to be like a cthulhu thing like well i guess you said it's a real thing but it's a it's like a hawaiian name which I am, like, really worthless at trying to pronounce anyways. So, like, during all of this nonsense happening with them, Ava has gone to, like, talk to Kaplan about uh, Jolene's nightmare and, like, I guess seeing the shark kind of while she's not asleep. And Kaplan, or uh, Novak's like, Novak. oh, like, your your eyes are dilated. Let me, like, take a look at you. And he, like... Holds the flashlight up and has, like, it's like, okay, like, look up. Let me look at your eyes. So as she's looking up, he just jams a needle into her neck and sedates her, which sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so terrible. Yes. She, she's, like, looking straight up, and he's like, higher, higher. <laughs> like, what? How much more straight up could she be looking? Oh, God. Like, the the needle into her neck was, like, the worst thing in this movie. <laughs> uh, agree. Uh, and then, so he sedates her and, like, carries her down to his lab and puts her in the MRI machine because he wants to monitor her brain while the, all, like, these shark attack things are happening. Um, yeah, this is when, like, the shark fin pops out of the bathtub, um... Gina's attacked, Kaplan wakes up and fights to pull her out of the bathtub and she's like dragged under and as as she gets pulled under and he lets go of her arm, he falls back and like hits his head and then now he's knocked out. As as Gina like comes out of the water and like tries to get Kaplan awake, but he's just knocked the fuck out, so she runs off to find Novak. Uh Kaplan is now having a nightmare where he is swimming after Gina who is acting weird and, like, then turns into dust or, I guess, maybe insects. I don't know. <laughs> I just uh, kept running the swarm. It's it's just making me think of Tsunami, and I hate it. Yeah, I was but, trying not to say it, but... So I thought maybe when he's, like, in the real world, he has to, like, when he's... In their dreamland, he's a shark. In the real world, he has to manifest as something else. So he's manifesting as, like, insects. Like, that's how he's able to exist in our world. But that doesn't yeah. make a lot of sense now that I say it out loud. I mean, I think that's what they were going for, but... Yeah, it doesn't but make why? sense. <laughs> it's a sad existence. <laughs> well, I was, I was just mad because he's a cool he's a cool-looking shark, and then they turn him into something else, like... 90% of the time. I'd be extremely mad if I was a cool shark and they made me bees. Yeah! <laughs> right. That's what uh, I'm saying. It's also a bummer because you never get, like, a really good look at the shark either. Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of yeah. see its face sometimes, but you never really get anything else. And it's always kind of under shadows and stuff because it's supposed to be in nightmares. They definitely just spent all of the money on people levitating, right? And couldn't afford the shark, so they just made it bees. Uh, pretty <laughs> right? much, yeah. Yeah. 
Bees are the shark of the land. Out. That that and flipping yeah. that car. They, they flipped <laughs> that car earlier, which probably cost them some money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and then they had to rent like a, a raft. tractor <laughs> to like get the car. Yeah, that, that kid's raft. That was expensive. He's really attached to it, you know. That kid's got a good amount of shark movies under his belt, so I'm sure he's pulling in a hefty fee as well to come in and yell <laughs> out that being his raft. <laughs> <It's> an icon. <laughs> You gotta uh, <laughs> rent the raft and him together. It's costly. Um. So then it cuts like Kaplan's nightmare, where he's like, it's still part of his nightmare, but he's now in the cabin, which is like underwater, and he sees like Gina like banging on the windows, but she's massive, trying to like get into the <laughs> yeah. cabin, and then it's like the shark swimming around it, and like a severed leg goes floating by, and then he is sees like water coming in from the fireplace it goes to like look through it and gets pulled through the fireplace and i guess eaten by the shark but not really yeah who knows it's like i don't think you see him alive after that so yeah but i don't know you said you see his body in that like closet yeah so i don't i don't know what is happening there (laughs) i don't know uh jolene has like come running outside and like her and gina meet up um, Jolene is throwing up water, which is gross. Yeah, can um, confirm. Very gross. Enzo also is like come running out, and they re- like Ka- like Kaplan's missing, and R.I.P. Gone but not forgotten. <laughs> um, except for Kit, who does not know who yeah. Kaplan is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not pouring one out. I just can't. He's extremely. I, I, don't, I don't know who you are. Extremely not memorable. Um. So, Jolene is like, okay, I gotta get out of here and find Rob. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna go like, go to the road and just like walk until I get to like whatever motel he's probably at. And Enzo's just like, well, there's a bike over here. That was my favorite part. <laughs> Instead of like, hey. We drove cars here too. Why don't you just take one of our cars? It's like, oh, right? there's a fucking like, bike you could steal over here. <laughs> get on this bike. And then what? he's like, it's dark, so let me strap my cell phone to the bike handlebars. <laughs> and I'll turn on. Like, that happened with his belt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, with his belt. Like, I was like, what? <laughs> it's he's crazy. Like, it's dark. Yes, let me give up Some my MacGyver means of communication shit. with the with the outside world. Here's my cell phone with the flashlight on, and I'm going to tie it to the bike and go. I guess, to be go. fair, they've also realized at this point that they have no Wi-Fi anymore and no reception, so... I guess. Um, as, like, yeah, as he's, like, tying all the shit to her bike, they look over and see, like, her and Rob's car flipped over. Okay, this part bothered me because, like, he leaves, right? And he's driving for, like, a while before this, like, crash happens. And then I was, like, somehow he's, like, at the start of the driveway. Like, what? Well, it almost looked like they went walking through, like, some woods. Like, they, like, cut past, like, wherever he was driving. I guess, but... Yeah, but it's also, yeah, it also seems like he got, like, 20 feet away and fell asleep and (laughs) flipped over. (laughs) Like, he's still in the driveway. Yeah, he is just like, uh, well, you know, he was pounding beers the whole time, so who knows yeah, what was that. going so, on. So, like, I I, I, I I, guess I assumed they were beers, but I also felt like, wouldn't that make you sleepier if you were getting drunk? Maybe yeah. It would if you're me. Like, yeah, I, that's I, why I was saying he was pounding beer, so, like, I guess that's why he fell asleep so fast. I, I, I thought he was maybe drinking some kind of, like, coffee drink. Yeah, because Jolene, Jolene keeps taking caffeine pills because none of them want to fall asleep. Well, the reason I thought it was beers because, like, when they very first show up, they're like, there's a scene where they're in the car and they see, like, the other couples, and he was like, oh shit, I'm not trying to be social right now. And then he, like, <laughs> pops it open and, like, chugs it. So that's why I thought it was beer. I mean, I feel like, drinking, he's like drinking coffee out of a can sounds like it would taste extra terrible. But I did, I did want to comment on the quality of their southern accents 
because <laughs> in high school I was in a production of Steel Magnolias and I sounded exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It could be um, alcoholic co- coffee. They have that. I mean, yeah, it's true. It's still the best of both worlds. That's right. <laughs> PBR. That's right. I wasn't trying to. Yeah. P- I, I still haven't been able to find it. I'm, really, I want to try. I'm trying it. to get sponsored by PBR here. All right. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I wouldn't be mad about it. Actually, I was more like, I don't want to pay them to have said PBR, but it's fine. I mean, it's gonna go one of two ways. I'm hoping it goes the way where we get money. <laughs> <laughs> or at least PBR, like. Yeah, I'd settle for the coffee PBR. Yes. Ugh, I desperately want to try it and so see how. I do too. It is. So bad. I do too. As somebody that doesn't like it either, that just sounds like the worst thing on earth. <laughs> That's it why could it's end up being the best thing. The on best. Earth. Yeah. You're both fired. <laughs> uh, so I'll take my coffee PBR elsewhere. <laughs> we'll drink our coffee PBRs with our take, white cheddar Cheez Its, and you can just go over there, Nathan. Take that shit to Riff Raff. <laughs> um, I can I I I didn't understand a single reference. <laughs> single product you just I, I've never heard of any of that so PBR is pretty much like poor people beer but like okay. it's like poor it's like cheap but it's actually pretty good and they just came out with like a PBR branded like coffee so I actually don't really know if it's like beer coffee or if it's coffee that's alcoholic but it's like made by this it, it's like iced coffee made by this like beer company you live in a beautiful country (laughs) (laughs) sometimes i mean you know what goes better with your mountain dew cheesecake than a pbr coffee oh god that can't be real that's not it is real i promise you oh my god you can look it up it's real that's like i've never heard of that that's some shit that sounds so bad that like i would try (laughs) just to be like this is the worst thing i've ever eaten yeah, we love to make uh, desserts out of our soda here. <sighs> Dr. Pepper ice cream <laughs> rules. All right. What Good. the hell? Ooh, I, I saw they have Dr. Pepper uh, cotton candy, and they're coming out with hot tamale peeps. Like, there's all kinds oh. of culinary <laughs> culinary gems <Stop>. coming out. <laughs> I'm like, the world's ending. We might as well make I'm everything a dessert. I'm disgusted and jealous. Like, I... <laughs> disgusted and also envious because those sound amazing all of this is a nightmare <laughs> you'll have to come visit and then we can eat all of these treasures oh god yes, i'm just imagining you eating all of that stuff like in a sitting and just getting like oh, the god. worst stomach ache imaginable just washing it down with so much coffee pbr <laughs> <laughs> That's, like, scarier than any movie I've ever watched. (laughs) America's pretty scary. The real nightmare shark is the food we had along the way. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. No. Come on. Um, I don't... I don't know. Fucking Kaplan died eating, like, fucking hot sauce peeps or whatever the fuck you said. (laughs) Like... (laughs) (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Um, Jolene, like, goes to Novak's, goes to see Novak to get, like, her leg looked at. Or I put Jolene, no. I guess it was probably Gina. 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 My yeah. notes are, say Jolene, so. Um, and he is, like, looking at it, and he's, like, he does the same shit where he's, like, oh, your pupils are dilated. Uh, and, like... Right before he can sedate her, um, Enzo, yeah, Enzo and Jolene come, like, running in, and Novak, like, tells them about Rob, and Novak's like, oh, I'll call the police, and gets on the phone and says, like, the sheriff is now gonna go out and look for Rob, and should be there, like, shortly or whatever to, like, talk to them, or, and then he's gonna cancel the trial, um, and that... 
Ava is in, like, has been sedated so she could get some sleep and that she, like, asked him to do it and that he put her in the MRI machine after she signed off saying he could. The smiling made me so mad because Dr. Novet's like, well, I guess we'll cancel the trial, even though it's my life's work. I, <laughs> I just, I was trying to get help, you know, I just, you know, all my resources, I'm... I'm definitely poor now, but it's fine. We can cancel. I was like, shit, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> People are dead. I mean, yeah, but his life's work. I just want to, like, I'm sorry to say, Dr. Novak, but I don't think your trial was ever getting, like, I don't think you were ever <laughs> getting approved. There's a lot wrong with your process. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't think he's been following strict guidelines to get this drug approved. Doesn't seem like it. It's okay, they're in America. Doesn't matter. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> um, so, Novak takes Enzo down to see Ava in the MRI machine, and Jolene and Gina go off to look for Rob. Um, Novak... And, like, Enzo kind of argue for a minute about, like, Ava being in the MRI machine. And he goes to show Enzo, like, the release form that she signed. And he's like, oh, that doesn't really look like her signature, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, can I go use your phone since we don't have reception? And Novak's like, yeah, go ahead. And Enzo goes upstairs to get on the phone and gets knocked the fuck out by Novak, who hits him with a mallard paperweight yeah, this, is, this is where the villain becomes the villain becomes ducks because the paperweight is a duck and then there's a duck on the wall and then there's the shadow of a duck i mean like, it's, all, it's all ducks the natural the, enemy of the shark is the duck the quackening <laughs> um so enzo gets knocked out and is like tied up and like pretty much just like thrown in like a closet downstairs in the lab and then you cut to Ava waking up in her dream, be, like buried alive in a casket, which is like my biggest fear. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, she like Kill Bill punches her way out of the casket and is in a desert, mm. which is the maybe the most baffling part of this whole movie. Like we said earlier. And sees her parents, like, off in the distance, who she runs up to, and they tell her that she should have died with them. Which is harsh. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> good, good dream parenting right there. <laughs> um, Jolene and Gina are, like, sitting outside waiting for the cops to show up, taking caffeine pills. Um... This is and then Gina immediately decides she's going to go to sleep after taking a caffeine pill. <laughs> like, what? I mean, yeah. That's pretty sure that's how that works. Um, you cut to Enzo, like, in the closet, who breaks a broom in half and then uses, like, the, one of the split ends of it to, like, cut the ropes off his hands, which he's able to do very easily. And then... Like, he is basically, like, escaping from this closet through the air ducts. And you get a scene of Jolene and Gina in one of their rooms. Gina immediately goes to sleep as Jolene hears a tractor roll by and goes to check out what the fuck's happening. Which is Novak driving to get Rob and Jolene's car off the fucking road in his giant tractor. <laughs> There is so much happening right now. Yeah, this is where, like, <laughs> there a bunch of shit's happening, and it's cutting back and forth, like, constantly between characters and dreams and real world, and... Uh, also, while I was watching this, I had about 3,000 commercials. Playing, yeah, me like, too. From here on yeah. out, it was, like, every, f like, eight minutes, there was five commercials I had to sit through. Yeah. It was maddening. <laughs> I'm almost positive this hour twenty minute movie took me like two and a half hours to watch. It it was Godfather esque. <laughs> like four hours later. 
But did you were you watching it like through the Sci Fi website? Uh, we had I had to watch it through the NBC app. Okay. Yeah, I yeah that's same. what I did. I did the same, and the transition to commercials was super jarring. Yes. So yeah, we would be like mid dream, and there's the shark, and I'm like you know invested, and then this woman would turn like this woman would suddenly appear on screen and she's part of a commercial but I don't know that and she turns to face me and she just says metastatic breast cancer and I'm like what <laughs> what is happening yeah There's or no mine was just there. like bye prilosect like really loud and I'm like what so like, my dreams are out of control <laughs> I, I watch this a bunch a, of this is a nightmare I watch a bunch of stuff on Tubi that just kind of throws commercials in like wherever yeah. they don't pay any attention to like commercial breaks on TV shows or anything like that and so like it'll be like mid like word and it'll cut into a commercial sometimes so this was definitely not anywhere as bad as how Tubi's commercials seem to work yeah at least <laughs> like on Tubi sometimes it'll be like someone will be in the middle of like a sentence and it'll just like cut and I'm like who? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> like what? it's so weird uh, so Gina is also now in a dream and like realizes it and goes to like open the door and which just turns into like a cliff that she is falling off of but she's like hanging on by the doorknob oh yeah well, it's just another like scene that I'm like that this has like nothing to do with a shark I don't know why this is part of your dream but um Jolene at this point has goes to like use the phone in Novak's cabin and finds it doesn't work because it's just like not plugged in or doesn't have batteries or whatever so like he never is called that, anyone is that how phones work like uh, like I haven't had a landline in many years but the problem seems to be that the phone does not have batteries well like yeah if, the, if, if your phone if you have like a cordless phone that's like it's got to have something powering it so it's just it was like a really lame version of like the phone cord being cut yeah like, well basically. and also like, this movie is from like 2018 so like i don't know i mean it was I kind of it was a weird thing I to put in there i fully believe that novak would have landlines also well i mean he also like nobody has cell phone reception in this place so like i guess you would have to have a phone line or like a landline. Yeah, his one phone does not work. <laughs> um. So yeah, Gina in this dream starts like falling off this cliff, and like as she's doing it, I think does the shark like in this where he's like starting to like slowly kind of come into the real world during this part. I can't remember if this is one of them or not. Or no, as as she starts floating or whatever. Yeah, and this is a a floating. Yeah. Jolene like pulls her down and like wakes her up right before she like hits the rocks in the in the water. Yeah, but I think you do see the shark at this point. Like Jolene sees it. Okay. You know the same shot of its face, like and 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 lightning. Yeah. <laughs> and oh. <laughs> um. At this point, Novak has made it with his tractor to Rob's car and finds his gun and takes it and then just, like, picks up the car. Um, Jolene tells Gina about, like, the phone not working so that, like, the cops are never called. And they go to break into his, like, Novak's barn to look for weapons and they grab a shovel and a machete. Um, they hear somebody coming and they hide behind the doors and it ends up being Enzo who gets hit with a shovel in the head as he like walks into the barn who takes that very well he's like oh yeah it happens in BD bro <laughs> yep no big deal <laughs> um, Enzo shows them like the boat proving that uh, Novak was the one that was responsible for, like, Ava's parents' death. Which, like, 
at least I have to give the movie this at least that came back because like when she was telling the story originally and she was like the guy we pulled up and asked if he needed help and then he shot our boat and not us and I was like why that's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard of to like set up a backstory so at least there was a reason like I have to give this movie props and that like everything ties back together like at the end which like a lot of these movies I feel like don't so well most of but, these movies don't have plots this kind of like detailed either it's just like oh I right. live in a swamp and there's a shark attacking so well but why yeah true did, why why did he want to kill her family but not her so he explains to Enzo towards the end that he was the doctor that worked on her when she was having the nightmares yeah. as a kid and realizes that she had the same sort of like brain patterns that he did when he saw the shark and like he had to, it's it's a weird like almost like jigsaw from saw level fucking setup of like <laughs> like I, he set up all of these fucking events somehow to like get her to this point where he could use her to bring this shark into the real world so he treated right. her for her nightmares before yes killing her family he he like he he was an MRI technician I guess or something that worked on her as a kid for her nightmares and realized her brain patterns were the same as his and he says something about how he did tests on her without his her parents approval and lost his license because of it and then like right. had to like he he kind of kept track of her throughout and had to like set up this stuff with like killing the parents to i don't know do whatever to like get her i i just want to well, say i have i have i have two degrees but i I did not understand that. Like I, I was not. I was not it's, capable of following that. It's extremely well, convoluted, but like I, I get what they were going for. It's just. It's just not. De like it's extremely stretch for, stretching the like I you know the limits of belief on how this would work out. But thank well, you because for explaining he, that for me. Yeah. Like, he also says that like the way that he found. How hoo hoo is that he <laughs> like had this accident where he uh like almost died or whatever like he specifically says that the only way that the shark happens is if like you are asphyxiated and then you live so like Why? he says that he like was scuba diving and his tank was like messed up so he couldn't breathe and then the shark like saved him so I think that like whenever he shot the parents boat like he wasn't necessarily like I'm gonna kill these people but he was like trying to make a traumatic event so that like I, I feel like they alluded to the fact that the shark saved her but like ate so her he family a scenario another person experiencing near drowning right this right okay so he was trying to like replicate what happened with him like with this little girl which like is right. yeah and it worked i guess so again <laughs> good, I, good I for best, him <laughs> i best know this actor as geppetto so this is really <laughs> upsetting <laughs> yeah like <laughs> it's a lot to take in yeah it's a lot um, I mean, this could be like his alternate story where, you know, things go wrong for him if he wasn't a pure soul. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah. the alternate timeline. <laughs> Just like different water creature. So, oh, yeah, the big, yeah. So Ava, is, like, asleep in the MRI. Um, Jolene. Jolene and uh, Gina and Enzo have like shown up like Enzo's like oh like you know shows them she's in the MRI machine but they can't get into the room they try to like break the glass but it's plexiglass so they can't get into it Enzo's plan is to crawl through the air ducts again and Gina's like well like I can I can go into my dream or like into her dream and like try to get her out so she goes to try to go to sleep which she can't do <laughs> And 
she's like, she's like, okay, I'm just gonna like hold my breath and tries to do that, and I can't, you know, like you, you can't do that. And so she has yeah, to like, convince what? Jolene <laughs> to choke her out. <laughs> Is this that part, I actually. I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say. I was gonna say this. Who... <laughs> <laughs> I'm muting my you. mic. Please, you're the guest. Oh, thank you. As somebody who has like legitimate insomnia i found myself wondering is that what i need for someone to choke me out until i fall asleep <laughs> like maybe that's the answer is that that that's mm. legit right i mean i think you need tabasco peeps <laughs> oh uh, yeah, like okay. that's it if, if some if someone chokes you you will definitely pass out but i um, i don't know if that qualifies as but sleep will i get a good night's uh, sleep i don't think so I don't think so. I think that's, like, really super, uh, like, okay, for anyone listening, don't do that. Because, like, it definitely deprives your brain of oxygen. So, like, you'll sleep, but then you'll wake up and, um, like, have forgotten one of your degrees or something. We at I Hope You Suffer <laughs> stand being choked out to sleep. So. No, we don't. <laughs> I, I Listen, Hope You Suffer approved. <laughs> if that's your thing, that's fine. It's got to be moderation. Don't do it to go to sleep. That's all it's I'm saying. like... Uh, there's a character in the movie Pop Star that like his 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 drug is flatlining <laughs> because he saw the movie Flatliners, so that's like all yeah. I think of now is like. <laughs> I mean, kind of the same concept. Um, passed out, dead. I mean, what's the difference? Yes, it's a pretty much just one step away. Uh, so. Gina like eventually gets choked out and is wakes up in like the desert with the scissors she had in her hand and like catches up to Ava uh, as Enzo gets into the MRI room and turns off the MRI machine uh, Gina tells Ava about her being drugged and locked into an MRI and like tries to wake Ava up by stabbing her hand with the like with the scissors which kind of works for a second but she pops back into the dream as what I originally thought was going to be a giant shark fin and a giant shark starts popping out of the sand which ends up being I guess shark teeth that like envelop them I don't know I, I thought it was a fin at first too but then I was like mm, it's white it I don't know it would have been sick if it was just a giant shark that just like showed up in the desert yeah That's what I thought like it was going to be huge yeah like, if that's so what would have happened, just to have this giant shark that, like, would, like right before they got eaten, like, show, like they pop back into the real world, like, woke up, that would have been awesome. It would have been way better than whatever the fuck this was. And yeah. then he turned into even more bees. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so many bees. Yeah, like, these shark teeth that pop out of the sand, like, that start to, like, envelop them. Ava is, like, slapped awake from from Enzo right before the shark can cross over into the real world. Um, there is a pretty cool scene of like, like Gina and Ava's bodies being like moved around in like the room from whatever's happening in their dream where Gina's holding the scissors that like scrape across the floor. And she gets pulled back. And then this is like one of the scenes too, where like Gina gets like she gets pulled like across the floor and like up a wall where I was like oh this will be awesome if they're doing like that scene from Nightmare on Elm Street which they I think is and what they were kind of going for but they don't really yeah. do it very well but they just kind of like stop well she's she gets like pulled up the wall and starts floating like across the room and starts slashing at something with the scissors and you see a bunch of blood hit the floor and you realize that as she hits the ground and wakes up, she was being, like, munched on by the shark, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I don't like that. I mean, but you know. I, I'm just disappointed, because I'll, I'll do my usual disclaimer at the end about how sharks are really our friends, and, and we shouldn't be afraid <laughs> of them, but I, in a shark movie like this, I really want to see like a sh some shark bites and some shark chomping action and I was really disappointed because she was getting chomped on and you didn't see it and I had no like I wasn't even clear that that's what was happening like it was the world's most disappointing 
Shark attack. Espe- yeah, especially she- for a movie where like this is the only kind of real shark attack you see. Yeah. She's just sort of like floating and like sometimes you see the shark under like but he but it's kind of like she's floating on top of him so it's like I'm not yeah. even sure how he was biting her. It was weird. It looked like they were like swimming together. Yeah. <laughs> They're Super having like a free willy moment. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my god, that would have been awesome if it was just her like free willying over the shark. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, Gina has died r.i.p r.i.p um at this point like they go back upstairs and jolene sees novak driving his tractor back um they kind of piece together at this point that they like if they can bring the shark into the real world they should be able to kill it uh so they go to get weapons and at this point ava sees the boat that Novak used to kill her parents. Um, they decide instead of just going to do this plan and hiding, they're just going to do it right out in the open because it was smart. So yeah, they- <laughs> I was like, they're literally at a bonfire right in front of the freaking lodge, and Novak is like back, and I'm like, isn't he going to be like, oh, where did they go? They're just like, all right, are we ready to fall asleep? And I was like, you freaking idiots. They literally say, like, let him find us or whatever, but that's a terrible <laughs> plan. So, Like, um, okay. So basically their plan is that Enzo is going to hypnotize Ava so that she can lucid dream and, like, control her nightmare. And she has, she's, like, talks about what her nightmare is as he's, like, hypnotizing her with this necklace very badly. Um, she falls asleep. You're getting sleepy. And so, like, she she falls asleep and just, like, hunches over and you see a dart in her back as you realize that Novak has shot her with a tranquilizer dart. That Dun- part was also Dun- pretty Dun- funny. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, shit, Enzo's really good at hypnotism. Like, wow. Yeah, I think Jolene was like, wow, it worked. And I was like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> um... Jolene gets up to like run off and she gets shot with a dart as well so now she is also asleep um at this point Novak is like holding Enzo hostage basically and just has a bunch of dialogue that we kind of explained earlier that were like his motivations and how he worked on Ava as a kid and all that stuff um and he basically explains all of the stuff about using his experiments to bring this shark into the real world because if he does that he will be like essentially the second in command of this shark which also makes no sense to me he's gonna be shark queen i'm mm, i guess nice. <laughs> um uh there's a bunch of like uh, jolene you see part of her like in her nightmare um, where she's like in a, like one of the cabin rooms and like the walls and like floor are breaking apart and just spraying her with water and she starts just spraying water all over the place out of her mouth in the real world which I believe kills her I think she dies from this I don't know I think she I... does I think this is like part of her like just she's just like drowning in the real world from inside her dream She's the I mean, terrible dreaming. way to go. Oh yeah. yeah, it sounds horrendous. Um, Ava. That's a cool visual, though. I mean, yeah, it's pretty decent. Uh, Ava, at this point, is like in her nightmare. It kind of like it sees her nightmare playing out, playing out like third hand or whatever. She, yeah, like, so sees it's like the. By the nightmare like from the opening scene but now she's watching it yes yeah um (laughs) she like she sees this happening and you get like you cut back and forth between like her nightmare and like novak and enzo in the real world um ava in her dream goes and gets a shotgun and chases the shark into the water um novak is explaining to enzo in the real world how Ava is the key and, like, will open the gate to allow this shark to come into the real world. 
Um, like Novak gets distracted for a second as the gate is starting to open, and Enzo like tackles him, and they're kind of fighting for this gun. As in the dream, Ava underwater starts like shooting the shotgun at the shark, swimming at her, which. This is, I think, the second movie we've done as somebody shooting a shotgun underwater. At least she's in a dream in this one, though. Like, Mm -hmm. dream, you know, dream logic. Yeah, and Bait 3D, it is absolutely not a dream and also seems, like, (laughs) not possible. Are we sure it wasn't a dream? No. I mean, it could have been. That shark suit and it was a thing. Now that's a dream. Straight out of my dreams. (laughs) Um. So the as, like this the shark is starting to like materialize into the real world, even though it looks like bees and lightning. <laughs> yeah, still like what the hell? <laughs> um. Uh, Enzo eventually gets like the gun away from Novak, and like, or well, I think. Novak maybe gets the gun, but as he does, Ava comes out of her dream and, like, stabs him with the machete or whatever. I thought she harpooned him. I thought it was the machete. She may. I don't know. I just saw Where'd something like... Where'd she get a harpoon? Oh, yeah. Off a boat. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I just assumed it was the machete that I they had from you. earlier, so... Either oh. way, he gets stabbed through, like, his stomach area. His... Yeah. And... Um, Enzo like gets the gun and starts like firing into the gate to try and stop this shark Uh, this shark mauls Novak and then mauls Enzo and kills Enzo I believe and then yeah I think so um, well it's kind of weird because I thought like it, it's like a weird graph like it's like a weird thing that happens because the swarm like like envelops them and I'm like oh like they're gonna get deteriorated but then like drops their bodies and they just have like some scratches on their faces or whatever I'm like okay I don't understand what this <laughs> swarm is but that's fine yeah it's weird um Ava goes like running into the house and the shark's like chasing her and she goes into the MRI room and turns on the MRI machine which the shark somehow like swims into and gets killed by this MRI (laughs) machine should also say that at no point was this an actual shark it is also just the bees like the entire time (laughs) the bees in an MRI yes yeah Um, all of a sudden Ava wakes up in the MRI machine as Novak is letting her out and (laughs) he realized that this was a dream question mark and they have, like, some dialogue about how the medicine worked and she was able to, like, conquer her fears or fucking whatever. She, this like, part was really confusing to me because, like, I didn't realize she turned on the MRI machine. I just, like, the swarm, I was, like, swarm walks down the stairs and messes everything up. <laughs> then it, like, swarmed at her. <laughs> I didn't realize that she turned on the MRI machine. So to me, I'm, like... How did she conquer her fear? She was just, like, cowering in a corner, and then she woke up. Like, what? So that makes more sense. <laughs> I, just, I was like, oh. That's it? No. I mean, <laughs> no, but... <laughs> I also don't really know how an MRI machine, like, messes up bugs, but whatever. Well, that's well, what I... Yeah. Maybe I didn't they know were that metal bugs. MRI was effective against bugs. <laughs> I don't... Just, it's essentially just a giant bug zapper. <laughs> yeah, right? I need someone to go get an MRI and ask the questions. Ask these questions. Uh, Like, so, Ava, like, the rest of the group is there, and, like, they're all like, oh, this is great, blah, 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 and she's like, I'm gonna go upstairs, get some water, and she gets a glass of water and looks out the window and is underwater and sees the shark swimming at her and credits. (sighs) So, what? I don't know. Everything was a weird Inception <laughs> dream. But, like, I just don't understand. I don't get it. <laughs> you didn't see the top <laughs> spinning next to her as she was doing it, just not falling over? I mean, pretty much. Like, <laughs> what? Uh, so, yeah. to recap, to recap, it was all a dream, 
but was it? Yes, pretty that, much. That's it? Okay. I think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> what a film. I don't either. I'm really confused. Uh, we're gonna need someone to explain it to us. I need an essay. Yes. <laughs> I, I feel like at some point somebody's probably going to do some kind of like thesis in college on like sci-fi shark movies. Oh my god. <laughs> like it's I'm going to go happen. back to school just to do it. To get a master's in film theory. The theory of the sci-fi shark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like a, yeah. Uh, it's somebody, a body of work. Somebody just breaking down the S, let's see, S S C U sci fi shark cinematic universe. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm kind of into it, but I feel like if this was a journey you go on by yourself, you do not come out the other side. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm currently sort of doing it, so. Right. Godspeed. <laughs> uh, so I saw, as ahead. I was just Googling this movie uh, on IMDb, I came across some random person's list of all the sci-fi shark movies and he had ranked them and i was shocked oh, wow. to see that nightmare shark was number eight uh what? ranking above ice sharks which i think is a travesty <clears throat> um I, I, ice sharks i believe was number 13 so yeah nightmare shark was his number eight out of like 20 to 30 films i what was number one uh Oh god, now I need to find it again. Oh, that's um, it, it better be Hammerhead Shark Frenzy. It's probably a Sharknado movie, which means that person's got no real taste because it should be Santa Jaws. <gasps> Santa, no. no, Santa Jaws. No, Santa Jaws was very low on the list. That's terrible. Santa what? Jaws. Oh, is the best. wait, I found it. Okay, I found it. Um, so the list is called Sci-Fi Shark Movies I've Seen, ranked from best to worst. Okay, uh, so. I'm sad to say that Santa Jaws is number 26. Unacceptable. Of 29. What? Uh, Ice Canceled. Sharks is number 13. Again, travesty. And then Nightmare Shark, number 9. And his number one sci-fi shark movie is something called Surrounded. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Me I've neither. never heard of that. I don't either. It's probably like surrounded, but then has like a, a an alternate name that's just like something completely ridiculous. Uh, no, surrounded frenzy. Yeah, sounds about right. Anyway, so I just I, yeah, I don't think that Nightmare Sharks ranks above Ice Sharks. I I, I just don't think that that's true. I'd agree with that. <laughs> so I, th- I think I think this movie has a good idea and premise to it but like just doesn't doesn't go as hard as it should have with the Nightmare on Elm Street stuff I think if they would have added no it was confused well it was kind of like this guy watched like Inception and Nightmare on Elm Street and was like "Mm, I like sharks I kind of like these two movies (laughs) let's just like combine them all and see what happens Oh my god, this is a pretty solid thought process. Surrounded it movie didn't work out. about a vlogger. So hard out. Oh no. I have some really sad news. I was looking through the other comments and I didn't see this listed on the actual page, but somebody says an alternative title for this movie is Curse of Curse of the Dream Witch. So that makes me sad. <laughs> I will say it's my <gasps> on um, on Letterboxd Surrounded has a 1.7 and Nightmare Sharks has a 2.7, so. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Um, alright. Uh, do you have, you had news, Katie? Yeah. None of it's, like, that great. <laughs> One of them that I already tweeted about is that Eli Roth is producing a new oh, franchise, God. and it's called Ooh. Clown Apocalypse. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Like, what? <laughs> also, and it's going to include a game? Like, eh, I don't know, man. Maybe not. Maybe don't do that, but that's whatever. Um, I've also seen a lot of, like, boos on this, that they're developing a new version of The Thing 
that's going to be like uh, I don't know, like I mean, an adaptation that, from a novel? That doesn't bother me as much because if they're not remaking the John Carpenter movie, if they're just doing another version of the novel, like whatever, like Right. Were so like, we're remake like we're going to just remake John Carpenter's The Thing again cuz it's going to I guarantee you it'll end up being like a pretty vastly different movie if that's the case. That's sort of what I, it sounds like to me. Are you mad kid? That's what we all thought about the uh, 2011 one. I thought that was a like, pretty much a, just straight out was like, oh, we're, we're doing a sequel to John Carpenter's movie, which is like, why bother? Yeah, this one seems like it sort of, it, like, when I was reading an article about it, it is based off of, like, a real, like, novel, at least, <clears throat> that I guess was previously, like, it was just recently discovered or something. I don't really know. Uh, but it also is it's supposed to, like, expand on the story, like, on the backstory, and, like, so... I don't know. I, I don't know. I so, think it all just ends up being in whoever's hands it ends up in. Like, if it get, if somebody yeah. good gets, like, to direct it and write it and stuff, I, it's got potential. Like, that's... The the story it's based on is a good story from the start. So, like, if it just ends up with somebody who knows what they're doing, it'll be all right. Just yeah, I don't really don't try to know. make John Carpenter's movie again. Right. Yeah, I don't really know, like, who like who all is going to be involved in it except for Blumhouse and Universal. So, I don't well, know. That's um that's hard pass. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh and then my other thing is like I don't know. Just another kind of like rumor mill kind of thing, but um there's a rumor that there's uh two more Silent Hill games in the works. So, that's pretty exciting. That's my news. Boo. Thumbs what? down on all of it. <laughs> what? what? Silent um, Hill's great. I don't have to come. It's terrible, though. I assume it'll be just, it, it won't even be new games. It'll just be them re, remodeling or whatever, remastering old ones again. I want Loud Mountain. We'll see. Give me a new Battletoads game and I'll care. Jesus Christ. Uh, Battletoads Silent Hill crossover. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, all right. Do you guys want to shout anything out? And then, Michelle, if you have, like, something, like a podcast or movie or TV show or album or something you've enjoyed lately, um, you can definitely jump in on... that's a big question. (laughs) Well, I mean, I'll go first. Um, I'm going to say listen to the podcast Worst Year Ever because they are breaking down a bunch of shit in kind of the political landscape of 2020 and kind of being fair about it and just essentially breaking down what is going to be the worst year ever and they did two episodes last week on like the richmond fucking gun fiasco thing that was going on that were extremely illuminating and well done it's hosted by robert evans from behind the bastards and katie stole and cody johnson from even more news so it's really good and entertaining and kind of they've been doing they were doing episodes for the kind of second part of last year where they were doing deep dives into like the candidates running for president and kind of going over good things some of them are done bad things some of them are done being kind of totally fair like they most of them are big for like Bernie Sanders but they were just like look Bernie's not exactly perfect here's some kind of dumb shit he's done in his past but I don't know it's good and it's kind of better than watching the news less terrible than watching the news I guess <laughs> Um, Kit or Katie, you guys got anything? I'm gonna say Color Out of Space. I if it say that. is actually playing by you, because it is fucking like 45 minutes away from me everywhere. But yeah, it's there's screening by you. Check it out because it's there, very good. There's one screening within two hours of me, and it's not until like February 22nd or some shit. <laughs> well, the movie just comes out three days after that, so... I know, that's why I'm just like, just I'm, just blue, I'm just gonna order the Blu-ray and watch it then. Yeah, it's not playing, like, the closest movie theater to me, I have, like, one of those, like, old theaters that gets, like, the run over, but they only play four movies, so it's, like, Star Wars, and then, you know, that's it. The closest one to me is, like, a 40-minute walk, and they're not showing it, so I'm really bummed, but I'm glad to see that it's getting, like, pretty good, like, pretty good feedback. Um... I guess uh, I've been watching a lot of movies recently. The only one that stands out to me is, have you guys seen Patchwork? No. <clears throat> I have not. So, <laughs> 
It is insane. So uh, they just added it, I think, to Shutter recently, and I had seen like if you guys like watch look at the cover i think you'll probably like recognize it at least it had been on my watch list for a while and they just added it to shutter i was like on shutter i don't really know what i felt like watching so i tuned into shutter live and they were streaming it it was like the first streaming of it and that movie is bonkers and i really really enjoyed it so i'm gonna recommend patchwork on shutter all right do you have anything michelle uh yeah Hold on just a minute. I'm seeing if it has come out yet. No, there was this movie <coughs> that I'm kind of obsessed with that I actually saw uh, last year at the Toronto International Film Festival, uh, and it's called The Wind. Uh, I don't know that it has broad release yet, but it was this. It was part of the Midnight Madness um, program at TIFF last year. Or, yeah. Wait, now I'm confused. Hold on a sec. Was it last year or the year before? Maybe this is really outdated information. <laughs> you guys are really putting me on the spot. Oh, that's Hold fine. On. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it was last year. Uh, anyway, it's this 2018, so two years ago. Sorry, I'm very outdated. But it was at part of the Midnight Madness program at the Toronto International Film Festival. And I saw this movie, uh, Midnight Madness, like the screenings start at midnight. Um, and I was massively sleep deprived and really hopped up on caffeine. But I promise that it is <laughs> just a crazy, a crazy, scary movie. And basically the premise is that there's this woman in on like the frontier in the 1800s. And it's based on these documents of actual women from that time where like their husbands <laughs> or whoever would go off to town or just I don't know, go off to deal with their cattle or whatever. And they were left totally alone on the frontier with nobody else around for hundreds of miles. And they would write in their diaries and they would start to hear things in the wind, voices in the wind. And the entire movie is based on this concept. And it is so isolating and uh, totally terrifying. And I saw it two years ago in this sleep deprived state and it feels like a fever dream. And I don't know if it ever got broad release, but if you can find it, it's The Wind, and it has this kick-ass, like, female lead, and I loved it. And if you know where it is and where I can watch it again, I don't know, tweet me or something, because maybe I made it up. Um, that sounds crazy. I, it it um, was so, it was honestly so good. It looks like, well, granted, I think this would just be U.S., but it's like at least available to rent on Amazon and like Google and iTunes and stuff. Uh, this so, actually looks pretty good. I kinda it watch is this. excellent. So that's my recommendation. This movie that I saw and then never heard of again, which is really disappointing because I think it was really well done. And uh, the director was there at the screening, super like intelligent lady. Um, it's yeah it's it's very well done and uh i don't think it's just because i was half comatose (laughs) (laughs) uh yeah this looks i was looking at it on letterbox this looks good i'm add this to my watch list yes yeah it does look pretty good it also like this episode will come out like the first week of february so like february is women in horror month and this is Woo-hoo! written written and directed and main stars women so yeah. it, it definitely so. yeah it's uh the female lead like she's incredible so highly recommended i see a lot of people like in the reviews of it kind of like um referencing it being like the witch so kit you may also be on board with I was, this. I was gonna say I saw the tomato meter was like high eighties and then the audience score was fifty percent. So that means oh. it is exactly my kind of movie because <laughs> <laughs> the audience score on like rotten tomatoes is pretty much always terrible. <laughs> and if it's good it's usually a not good movie, so um uh, alright. So yeah, check all that stuff out. Um Next week, I think we're doing Velocipaster. Oh my god. I'm so excited. Oh, Kit just left, so. Oh, see ya, Kit. <laughs> uh, yeah, he may jump back in. We'll see. Um, 
Yeah, you're next, fired. Michelle, next, you're hired. Yes, there we go. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> uh, next week, I think we're doing Velocipaster. I just gotta make sure everything works out with our guest. Um, Can you tell me, is that about a Velociraptor who's also a priest? It's about, a, yes, a pastor that can turn into a Velociraptor. Oh my god. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it rules. Hey, welcome back, Kit. <laughs> what in the fuck? I was like mid-sentence, and everything went super quiet, and I was like, where did everyone go? And I looked, and just like, my Wi-Fi was gone. Oh, cool. Uh, you're fine. I, was, like, I just... Because I don't think we've talked about it yet, I was just saying next week I think we're doing Velocipaster. Oh, hell yeah. So, I've just got to make sure it all works out with a guest I'm lining up. Um... Very excited. Yes. I watched it on vacation, and it rules. It's so good, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm the only one that hasn't seen it yet. Perfect. So this will be interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, so watch that, and if not, if we don't do it next week, it'll be like in the next, it'll be in February at least, so. Um, Alright, you can uh, leave us ratings and reviews on iTunes and Apple Podcasts, and you should. Um, leave us recipes yes follow us on twitter at i hope you suffer and instagram at i hope you suffer podcast go listen to kit's other podcast riff raff uh follow katie on instagram at werewolf face and buy her coffee at that coffee app ko-fi.com slash werewolf face uh, listen to my other podcast with my girlfriend caitlin called let me be your pot of love about garbage reality shows um all right michelle do you have anything you want to promote or throw out there um as you know i have a sort of defunct podcast uh, called are you afraid of the bark uh you can listen to season one uh if you want to get caught up I do have plans to come back with season two in the very, very near future. Uh, Yay! At this, I know. I'm like, I'm so. I like didn't want to. I didn't want to call you out and ask you if it was coming <laughs> back. So I'm glad you said something. <laughs> it, it is. It is coming back. Uh, season two. Uh, I don't have a date for that yet, but you can follow me on social media. The podcast is Are You Afraid of the Bark? Uh, not Are You Afraid of the Bork? Which is what somebody at my work searched for recently. Um, <laughs> which, yeah. So it's Are You Afraid of the Bark? Um, I'm on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, and yeah, hopefully coming with season two very shortly. The first episode is going to be a doozy all about haunted farm animals. So, <laughs> I mean... You really want to tune into that. I am excited. Yeah, because like haunted chickens, what could be scarier? <laughs> uh, I can't wait for the movie Nightmare Chicken to happen now. Oh my god! I mean, <laughs> so I've been playing this game a lot called Stardew Valley, and yes! for people who okay, so for people who don't know, it's basically a game where you are a farmer. You like move into a town, uh, you inherit your grandfather's farm, and it just like goes from there. And so I've been like tweeting updates about what happened but i'm turning my farm into like a spooky farm so i have like creepy demon statues and like skeleton lights and like all this crap so haunted farm animals is like right up my alley and i have black chickens so like yeah that's so on brand for you i know (laughs) (laughs) Uh, can i just like this is wait this isn't related katie who are you married to that's a really important question uh, Shane, of course. Oh, obviously. Okay. For me, well, okay, Elliot. so... Who is it? Elliot, obviously. Elliot. Yeah, well, so I went with Shane because you can get blue chickens, and he gives you the egg that you need for black... For me, it was all about the chickens. And I'm not going to, like, call anybody out, but I'm just going to say that, like, Shane is, like, pretty close to, like, my actual husband in real life. Like, so... I'm just gonna leave it at that. When you guys got married, yeah, black chicken. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So yeah. All right. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So everyone go play Stardew Valley and then eventually listen to haunted animal stories. At the same time, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh yay! I'm so happy. (laughs) 
Uh, thanks for coming back on, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I um, think we may be doing a month of shark movies, so you will absolutely be back. A whole yes. month? I think we're going to do yes. shark week, but like shark month, whatever. Oh my god. That, mu- that yes, week is. Please. so. Um, Someone else was supposed to remind us, because we can't be trusted when <laughs> shark week is. Shark month. I'm going to so. tweet, tweet you like every week i'm gonna be like shark month don't forget mark. shark month yeah <laughs> great right. that's what we need <laughs> <laughs> um all right thanks michelle um thank you yeah thanks thank for you having me. yep all right i hope you suffer but why shark roll ah! i don't know where that was <laughs> <laughs> i hope that sound is like really really loud <laughs>